This mobile laboratory has been deployed for a very specific reason. The Shady Fire is burning nearby, and this team is gathering data that you can only get at night. Over the next several weeks, NASA and NOAA are teaming up in the field to study smoke from wildfires and agricultural burning. Here's what 24 hours looks like in the life of these fire chasers. The team's been keeping a close eye on the Shady Fire, burning just four hours northeast of the base of operations. After several days of watching the fire grow, the forecasting team decides to deploy the mobile laboratory and the NASA and NOAA planes. The ground crew and pilots are already preparing the plane by the time the forecasters give their daily briefing. The more we learn about smoke, the better we'll understand health. My name is Amber Soya, and my role here is to determine what fires we should target. Smoke is related to respiratory illnesses, heart attacks, and even death. For some of our scientists, Understanding pollution has defined the course of their life's work. I'm a physical chemist, but uh, I'm also from what 60 Minutes called the most polluted city in America, Anniston, Alabama. When the opportunity came along to do this type of work, I, I really resonated with it. Dr. Bruce Anderson is the Langley Aerosol Research Group lead and a seasoned veteran when it comes to doing field work in remote places. By 3 p.m., the NASA DC-8 and the mobile laboratory are about ready to go. Bruce and his team begin with a five-hour drive to reach the fire. We'll catch up with them later. While the ground crew, pilots, and safety techs prepare for what will likely be six hours of flying through smoke plume after smoke plume, the scientists ready their instruments to capture data from the notorious Shady Fire. 30 minutes into the flight and the team has already reached the fire. Here's where the work begins. These flights are rare opportunities for scientists, so not a moment is wasted. I think that studying fire and chemistry, it only comes together when you have a diverse team of scientists. As the sun starts to set, the plume is harder for the pilots to see. And around 10 p.m., the plane heads home after a successful flight. Smoke sinks lower to the ground at night and sometimes accumulates in valleys, which is exactly where Bruce and his team are waiting for it. We'll set out, drive up there, find a place to position the, the van, then uh, start cranking up instruments. It takes about a half an hour to an hour to get everything running and calibrated. It's a guaranteed bad night's sleep, but you know, you can tolerate a lot for a day or two. This team of five scientists will be up almost every half hour checking measurements, replacing filters, and at one point repositioning the van to capture emissions more effectively. It's a long cold night, but eventually it's dawn and time to head back to town. By 7.30, the forecasters have already been awake for at least two hours selecting which fires the science team should target that day, including a scheduled return to the Shady Fire. In about two hours, the plane will be bustling with scientists preparing their instruments for the day's flight. And the whole cycle will start all over again. feel like the work that I do, the knowledge that I'm trying to pull together is important for the human race, you know, for our country. <laughs>